Yo, hello, hello, welcome to another video of the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in this video we're going to talk about the second part of the chapter, Get Ready. In the last video we met Statopus and in today's video we are going to meet Privetopus or Private Opus, Private Opus. I don't know how it's pronounced properly, but in any case we are going to meet the companies who basically rule the world of goods and services. The Trump superhero won't show us their wrongdoings because there are too many examples out there, but instead he is going to show us a handful of companies that are the masters of the game the monopolies, the cartels. And we are going to look at different domains. We are going to check out internet and digital media, clothes, wearables, furniture. We are going to look at healthcare, grocery products and transportation. The first question we have to ask is how can we calculate who is a monopoly and a cartel and who is not? And if we think about airline companies, then we can measure that in two terms. One is who or which company makes the most revenue and the second term is which company has the most passengers. And then there's also this thing of market share which is basically how many percent a company has on a certain market. So if we take the smartphone market for example, there's Samsung which has a market share of 20.5% and Apple has a market share of 14.4%. So basically Samsung sells more phones but then on the other hand, um, Apple makes more revenue. So who is the monopoly? Both, but in different ways. The Trump superhero combined now these factors and he took um, statistics from 2016 to 2018. So let's see what he is going to show us. The girl is like, I understand the companies are really bad and they put profit on top of everything. But at least we have a choice. You don't like a service? Well, you can just use another one. It's simple. But the Trump superhero asks, so if you don't like Facebook or YouTube, what will you choose? And the girl is like, Instagram for example. But then the Trump superhero says, Instagram is also owned by Facebook. Look, 12 massive farts, companies own the internet and the digital world entirely. Only 12. Maps, social networks, instant messaging, search engines, cloud computing or storage, video platforms, online stores, browsers, navigation, operating systems, apps, games and the hardware production to enable this world to function. Let's have a look at them in detail. There are basically three search engines, maps and GPS navigation, AI systems, video hosting services, self-driving cars and advertising platforms. So I don't know how to um, explain this now. I mean, basically the thing is there's the mother company in the middle in that cloud and all the services the mother company owns are around that. If we look at Google, it's just, it's insane because it is perhaps the largest company in the entire world, period. These are all the services they own. The other one is Yandex and Yandex is the Google of Russia. Yandex is Russia's biggest technology company and the fourth largest search engine worldwide and of course the biggest one in Russia. And these are the services um, owned by Yandex. And the third one is Baidu. It is one of the largest AI and internet companies in the world. It is the fourth website in popularity worldwide and across its services it has more than 2 billion active users worldwide. It also owns the second largest search engine only behind Google. And these are the services owned by Baidu. And if you are ever going to use any AI assistance, maps, search engines, translating software, mobile operating systems and apps, forums or blogs, email, cloud storage, you might use an autonomous car in the future or use an advertising platform to make profits online, then statistically worldwide you are going to use one of these three companies. 
The next thing is there are basically three platforms for social networks, instant messaging and gaming. Facebook, Tencent and Mail.ru Facebook is perhaps the most influential company in the world, managing the social lives of around 2 to 3 billion people or around 60 to 70 percent of all internet users. And of course WhatsApp belongs to Facebook, Instagram and then there's also Oculus VR. The next one is Tencent. It is the world's largest and most valuable gaming and social media company. It has services like social networks, music, web portals, e-commerce, mobile games, internet services, payment systems, smartphones and multiplayer online games, which are all among the world's biggest and most successful in their respective categories. It also owns the majority of China's music services with more than 700 million active users and 120 million paying subscribers, the world's largest and most profitable. To put it in perspective, Tencent is larger than Facebook by revenue when it comes to social media. And then there's Mail.ru, it owns amongst others the top three largest social networks in Russia and the entire fleet of websites it owns reaches some 86% of the Russian internet users. So you want to game, communicate or be social online? Statistically, worldwide you will use one of these three companies. Then online shops, there are basically two. <laughs> There's Amazon, which is the world's largest online retailer by revenue, by a huge margin. These are the services or smaller companies owned by Amazon. And the other one, Alibaba, is from China. If Amazon is the world's largest in terms of revenue, then Alibaba is the world's largest in terms of sales and most valuable retailer, which operates in over 200 tribes worldwide. It also owns one of the largest internet companies in the world. So you can see here all the other companies owned by Alibaba. Alibaba is the, the huge one in China. If you want to shop online or sell products, then you basically have two choices. Again, statistically worldwide. Then there are basically two personal computers in the world, Microsoft and Apple. Microsoft is the largest software company in the world by revenue. And Apple is the world's largest information technology company by revenue and the world's second largest mobile phone manufacturer after Samsung. These are the services owned by Apple. Yeah, you have a desktop, computer or a laptop, well, you are using Microsoft or Apple products statistically worldwide. And finally, there are basically two manufacturers of the electronics that allow this digital world to happen. There's Foxconn and Samsung. Foxconn is the world's largest contract electronics manufacturer and the fourth largest information technology company by revenue. Foxconn factories are responsible for manufacturing more than 40% of all electronics sold worldwide. Imagine that. They produce these products, they own these companies and they produce for these um, companies. Like basically all the famous electronic companies that you probably know. The other one is Samsung. It is the world's second largest information technology company by revenue only behind Apple and it produces a wide variety of goods and services. The Trump superhero explains, so 12 big parts companies own the internet and the entire digital space in general, both in terms of profits and in the terms of the people that they reach or the amount of stuff they produce. But he also wants to better put this into perspective to see them at work and how they monopolize the digital space, which is a space that should be abandoned, right? It is just basically zeros and ones. So
So whenever you copy and paste something, it is basically available at zero marginal costs. So for example, in the past, if you would invent a new kind of windmill, you would have to write it down or draw it down on a piece of paper and you would have to tell it to others and explain them how to build it, how it works and everything. But today we have this amazing technology called internet which makes it possible to just share it instantly with basically everyone worldwide. And everybody has then um, access to the 3D print, um, how to build it, how it works and everything. The Trom Superhero also thinks about machines because we can basically share the blueprints, the design of the windmill with machines directly so they can build them and print them out 3D print. Um, so it's like magic because there are no or less humans required. And that is a technology which would have seemed like science fiction 100 years ago. So it is really amazing what kind of technology we have. But the Trom superhero shows or he will explain that despite the fact that this looks like a technology that aliens would send to us to create heaven on earth, the digital space is already owned by the two octopuses you've already met. So basically if I have a physical book and I'm reading it, I can give it to you so you have it and you can read it and I just shared it with you. But what happens with digital rights management is that I have a digital book on my Kindle from Amazon, then I cannot um, send it to you because it is behind a paywall. It is basically encrypted so I need a key, a passphrase to unlock that book. So this is really ridiculous because if I have a book on a USB drive I can just share it with anyone instantly also over the internet and it is abundant basically. But what happens with DRM is it's behind a lock. I need to pay money in order to unlock something which is basically zeros and ones and abundant in the digital space. So that's what's happening. These companies, they lock them behind paywalls and encrypt them so that the access is restricted. And this is really troublesome. The Trump superhero explains that now also with browsers because if you access a website, you are accessing it with your browser. And what happens is that more and more companies um, require you to have a certain browser to access their website. And it's just another way of restricting access because if I have now the Firefox browser, I cannot access Netflix.com anymore. I need the Netflix browser. And the same thing happens with apps because on the smartphone, these companies have even more power than um, on the computer. So they basically come up with a restriction which is saying you need the app for accessing the services that we provide and yeah you cannot do much about it um, the trom superhero explains so privatopus is going to lock down the internet and have control over it and with the internet of things combined with drm we can safely see a future in which your toaster can only toast bread from a certain company crazy but maybe not so crazy your 3D printer will only print with their own printing materials, which is already happening. Your car can only be allowed on certain roads and all of those things that you own are illegal to hack for your own personal use. Actually, this is happening. Cars already have DRM software and they can only be repaired by certain companies. You own the car, but you really don't. You are not allowed to fix it yourself. So you see, Privatopus uses its power to keep it and to take advantage of it. And in another scenario, the guy is like, it's so fucking awesome that with my mobile internet plan I get free data on WhatsApp and Facebook. I mostly or only use those, so that's so awesome. But the Trump superhero is like, you naive being. Because he explains that another attempt of the Privatopus to own the internet is to own the cables. So they basically want to make the internet like cable TV. In the US tribe they thought why not have some websites load faster than others? Why not make the internet like the TV so that people can buy subscriptions to websites? 
so that they can only access those websites instead of the entire internet. And they passed a law allowing for that to happen. Basically, you will buy a subscription to access YouTube and Facebook and a bunch of other websites, but not have access to the entire internet, just like the cable TV. And the Trump superhero explains this is already happening all around the world when it comes to smartphones. I told you smartphones are the sweet and tasty snacks of private opus. Many mobile internet providers are already offering packages that include access to only a restricted number of websites. Or on the other hand you get offers that give you unlimited access to popular services and apps like WhatsApp and Facebook, making these giants even bigger. Locking down the internet by default, controlling the pipes, censoring the web, the private opus does them all. And yeah, there was recently a very interesting documentary released called The Social Dilemma. Um, maybe you've watched it. And I think they explain very well how YouTube and Facebook or these companies um, don't care at all about their users, but only um, they want as much data and attention as possible. But the question is why are these companies doing that and that's because they are pushed by our trade-based society. They have to make profit in one way or another, so they are making their revenue by personalized advertising. And this is what pushes those companies to behave like that. So what YouTube did was they make you watch an ad before each video and while you watch it, they make you click the next video, they make you click other videos while you pause the current one and they make you click other videos after you watch the current one. And here it's explained also very well how to get you hooked from the front page with many ad videos or popular videos. Um, how to promote celebrities and dumb content. And the third one is subscriptions. How to watch what we want you to watch. So YouTube only wants you to watch as much as possible because then you watch also more and more ads. It's very well explained in the documentary The Social Dilemma. So you see, Private Opus is going to lock down the digital space. Own, censor, block, lock, hegemony. The next domain is clothes, wearables and furniture. This is a domain which is also owned by a few companies who own the production and distribution of them. The girl is like, this is what I love about our society, variety. I can choose any glasses I want, any color, shape or brand. Chanel, Prada, Giorgio, Armani, Burberry, Versace, Dolce and Cabana. Miu Miu DKNY. Wow, so many options. Well, then the Trump superhero is like, again, wrong. They are all owned or made by a single company, just one. It's like I make ice cream cones and I name them differently, and you think that all of those names are brands that are independent from each other. But it's one single company behind those. In this case, it's Luxottica, which has a market share of 14%. And you know what's the second largest? Essilor with 13% market share and guess what? What happened? Those two became one entity and they merged together. Their next competitor is Johnson & Johnson with 3.9% market share. So in that case Luxottica and Essilor has a monopoly in that market. Now we are going to look at YKK, which is a Japanese company that produces zippers, among other stuff, and it is perhaps the biggest one in that niche. Just look at your zipper and you'll probably see the YKK logo. In 2007 the company was fined $115 million by the European Commission for running worldwide price-fixing cartels and sharing markets with two other companies, one from Britain and one from Germany. The other two companies were also fined. And Trump Superhero explains this showcases something very concerning about our trade-based game because it's not necessary to have a monopoly in a certain domain to dominate that domain. So smaller companies can also get together and do these shameless tricks like price fixing to dominate that market. Maybe alone you're not a monopoly, but together we will be. They agree behind closed doors how to run their companies in a way that will not allow for competition 
and will keep their status plus raise their profits. And then there are other examples provided here, but I'm not going to read them now. You can just look them up. Then there's Intidex, which is the biggest fashion group in the world and they own Zara, for example. There's basically in every bigger German city, there's a Zara store and also, of course, H&M, which is the second largest fashion group in the world. Go into any mall and it is very unlikely to not see these two companies dominating the retail space. Of course, we got the two sports giants, Nike and Adidas. They completely dominate the market of sports equipment and clothing. Nike is the biggest one in the world and the second in Europe and Adidas is the biggest one in Europe. So, what else do we got? We got IKEA, which is the largest furniture and in-house decoration fart in the world since 2008. There are also many IKEA stores in Germany, of course. IKEA owns and operates 415 stores in 49 countries in one year from 2015 to 16. They had over 2.1 billion visitors on their websites where they sell most of their stuff from. They have over 12,000 items. So whether you buy glasses, the Trump superhero explains, clothes or furniture, you will most likely buy them from these six huge companies. Grocery products. You may know this feeling of walking around in a supermarket store and you are just so overwhelmed kind of because there is such an abundance of different brands for one product. And <laughs> you might think they are entirely separate and different companies, but in the end you will figure out that they mostly belong to one big company. Nestle, for example, is a huge one. It is the largest food company in the world, measured by revenues and other metrics since 2014. Nestle's products include baby food, medical food, bottled water, breakfast cereals, coffee and tea, confectionery, dairy products, ice cream, frozen food, pet foods and snacks. Nestle has 447 factories, operates in 194 countries and employs around 340,000 people. It is one of the main shareholders, owners of L'Oreal, the world's largest cosmetics company. So Nestle is a giant one. You might think that Maggi, San Pellegrino, Tomi and Perrier and Cineminis are completely different but they belong to Nestle. Kraft Heinz, the world's fifth largest food and beverage company and the third largest in the United States. Then there's Mondelez, produces some of the most well-known brands of chocolate, cookies, gum, confectionery and powdered beverages. We got General Mills, which is a boss in North America, producing most of the top brands there. And these are the services General Mills owns. And then we got Mars and Mars is a global manufacturer of confectionery, pet food and other food products and a provider of animal care services and is ranked as the sixth largest privately held company in the United States by Forbes. They own for example Celebrations, Dove, um, Snickers, Mars of course, Maltesers, Milky Way, um, Bubble Tape, Airwaves. So also a lot of um, goods. Then there's Kellogg's. It too produces some of the most recognized brands of cereals, sweets, cookies or crackers. Kellogg's products are manufactured in 18 countries and marketed in over 180 countries. We got Danone, which was in 2014 the world's largest seller of fresh dairy products among the world's largest sellers of early life nutrition products and bottled water. It continues to be a huge player in the market. Then Ferrero is a big one with Nutella. <laughs> Nutella is so famous here in Germany, it's crazy. It is the third biggest chocolate producer and confectionery company in the world. 
And of course also Kinder Schokolade or Hanuta is also a big one here. Um, and of course what is really fucked up is that these chocolate products um, they are harvested or like the cacao beans are harvested by small children in I don't know in Africa and South America who are basically enslaved and yeah here people are just enjoying Nutella and everything seems to be fine oh it's so cool so nice to have Nutella but you don't see the slave world behind that product the Trump superhero explains so these eight companies own the food market sweets foods cereals yogurts even drinks but the next five companies complete the list of beverages and add to the list of foods that a few companies own so let's see next how the industry of beverages is owned by five companies There is PepsiCo, of course, which is the second largest food and beverage business in the world in terms of revenue. Within North America, PepsiCo is the largest food and beverage business by net revenue. Its products are distributed across more than 200 countries. Here again, there is 7up, Tropicana, Mountain Dew, Lipton and Schweppes, for example, all owned by one company. The other one is Coca-Cola. Who thought about that? In 2015, Coca-Cola was the world's third most valuable brand after Apple and Google. In 2013, Coke products were sold in over 200 countries worldwide with consumers drinking more than 1.8 billion company beverage servings each day. That's just insane. There's Abin Bev. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It is one of the largest packaged foods and beverage companies in the world. It is responsible for 28% of all the beers sales in the world and has approximately 500 beer brands in over 100 countries. Another huge one is Heineken which owns 170 beer brands and over 125 breweries in more than 70 countries. So another pretty famous one and there is the um, hard alcohol section which is owned by Diageo I also don't know how to pronounce it it is the world's largest distiller company it sells its products in over 180 countries and owns several worldwide best-selling vodkas or liquors so these are all of the companies that basically rule the world of foods and beverages in terms of availability and popularity. If you ever go into a supermarket, look at the label of any food or drink at random and you'll see how the vast majority of them are owned by these 13 monsters. Then there is the raw foods and beverage market which is made primarily by five other companies. So it's basically about meat production and dairy production. In the case of poultry there are three top companies JBS, Tyson and BFR taking over 60% of the top 10 production companies. Then in the case of the pork market there are also basically 10 pork producing companies and the WH group alone takes 27% of the production in this group. There is the dairy exports, uh, which is dominated by Frontera. And a very scary and concerning thing the Trump superhero explains when it comes to food is the owning of nature. So you know, nowadays companies genetically modify seeds and those seeds belong to them. But they also own pesticides and fertilizers. So what I have to do when I am a farmer is I have to go to them, I have to buy the seeds from them and then I also need to buy the pesticides and fertilizers from them. And this market is dominated by Bayer, BASF, Dow, DuPont, Monsanto and Syngenta. They own over 50% of the seeds, pesticides and fertilizers in the world and DuPont and Monsanto control 47% of the seeds worldwide. 
So what happens in the game of trade is that these huge entities, which are already so few, they even merge together even more. So we got Bayer and Monsanto who merge together, there's Chem China, Syngenta and Xenochem working together, Dow DuPont merge together and there is BASF which is still a fucking giant on its own. The drum superhero explains, therefore these nine companies are controlling the production of food, from seeds to animals to meats and everything else. But the Trump superhero explains before we close this topic, he has to mention three other companies that own the market of household personal care products and one of them also owns a lot of the food drinks market as well. No grocery store supermarket will be complete without those products. So these three are going to close this chapter in a beautiful and complete manner. There is Unilever, of course, it is the world's largest consumer goods company measured by 2012 revenue and the world's biggest ice cream manufacturer and currently it's Europe's seventh most valuable company. Its products are available in around 119 countries with over 400 brands. It owns so much, it is a complete monster. It's really crazy and there are many popular brands owned by Unilever. The other one is Procter & Gamble, which owns the most well-known products for household and personal care. And the last one is Colgate Palmolive, which is another giant of household and personal care products. And as a last note, he um, shows us or explains that Unilever and Procter and Gamble created a cartel in 2011 for price fixing practices and they were caught. They admitted it, they were fined, but they continued to be the biggest players in their domain. The same story with Colgate Palmolive, which was caught in 2016 for doing the same. So there you have it, 25 big damn farts of the privatopus that together are taking over any grocery store supermarket in the world. From the products that you see on the shelves, beverages, sweets, cereals, packaged foods, household personal care products, etc. To the meats, livestock, dairy or the seeds that enable the production of these, they are mainly almost entirely owned by these companies. Shitty situation indeed. So now the Trump superhero explains that Alphabet Inc. is the papa of Google, so basically Google under a different name, um, which is basically the largest media company by revenue in the world. But let's leave this modern fraud behind and focus on the old and traditional ones. Interestingly, we have six major companies that overtook the media industry. There's Disney and 21st Century Fox. Disney acquired Fox recently and they will finally merge in 2019, so last year. Combined, they own the most iconic cartoons and movies and some of the most popular TV channels. So here you have it, all the Lucas films, the Marvel adventure films, like Spider-Man, Thor and Iron Man and all of those, many famous and popular cartoons and many other movies like Avatar, Kung Fu Panda and so on, Ice Age also made by them and even Pixar movies like Wally, -E, which is a famous one, Ratatouille, The Incredibles, Nemo, there you have it, owned by these two companies. Then there's AT&T and Warner Media, the world's largest telecommunications company and also the second largest provider of mobile telephone services and the largest provider of fixed telephone services in the United States merged with one of the biggest names in the movie industry. So Warner Media also make a lot of popular movies like Batman, Harry Potter, The Hobbit, Inception, Matrix, Legend, Hangover, The Blind Side and I think that's King Kong, is it? So yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty.
pretty crazy because there's now one or like one entity behind those. Let's continue with Meredith. I don't know how this is pronounced. Um, as of 2018, they are the largest magazine company in the world. They own many different magazines. Probably most of them are in the US as far as it seems. Then there is Comcast, which is the largest broadcasting and cable television company in the world by revenue. They own, um, for example, Universal Studios and DreamWorks, which produced also popular videos like Shrek or Madagascar. I've watched that when I was younger. Then Universal produced um, E.T. or Jurassic Park, for example. But you know, nowadays I'm not watching any movies at all. Basically, um, only documentaries on video need. Everything trade free there. And then there's Vivendi. The company has activities in music, television, film, video games, telecommunications, tickets and video hosting service. They own Universal Music, um, Studio Canal, I don't know that one. Uh, but I know Paddington, I think I've seen that when I was younger. And also a bunch of TV channels and internet. Also Dailymotion, wow, I, I didn't know that. Um, Dailymotion is a big one, Vivo of course, and Gameloft, which produces many games. Um, so yeah, one company behind all those. Sony, of course, we cannot forget that one. Also a, a giant um, which owns many movies and music and yeah, Columbia Pictures, TriStar Pictures, I don't know that one. But yeah, they produce Rocky Balboa and Hancock. I know that one, District 8 or 9, I think. And even is that Man in Black, I think. And James Bond, wow, <laughs> so also one company behind all those movies. The Trom Superhero explains pretty much any movie you see, TV channel you watch, music you listen to is owned by one of these six powerful farts. And looking at a more broader picture, eight out of ten leading media companies in the world are US based companies. Considering how good the US Datapus is at spying on people and manipulating them, the power of private Datapus in the US is not going unnoticed by the Statopus. Let's continue with transportation. And this is now something like the Germans are pretty famous for. Man, I love motor showrooms, Audi, Bentley, Porsche, guys say. Um, Lamborghini and Bugatti. What would you like, a Lamborghini or a Bugatti if you were rich? And then the guy is saying, they are rivals, aren't they? Both fast, both slick, both jaw-dropping, but to me the Lamborghini brand is still better. But the Trump superhero comes in and he says, same brand, Volkswagen makes Audi, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Porsche, Seat, Skoda and even Ducati. You may think they are different brands under a different company umbrella, but they are not. <laughs> it's an illusion. Um, he explains worldwide there are some 95 million motor vehicles produced every year. Which is crazy because we have an abundance of cars already. Like, what the fuck? And then he wants us to think about the following. The top six companies are responsible for 55% of all motor vehicles produced. Over half. At the next four and now the top 10 companies are responsible for 72% of all motor vehicles produced. And the top 15 companies are responsible for 83% of all motor vehicles produced. And only 30 top car companies produce 97% of all motor vehicles in the world. Imagine that only 30 companies 
basically producing all of the motor vehicles in the world, meaning passenger cars, light commercial vehicles, minibuses, trucks, buses and coaches. So there you have it visually, the 30 farts own 97%. But the Trump superhero wants to focus on the top 10 since they are responsible for 72% of all the production, which means complete takeover by a handful of companies over the motor vehicles production. So we got Toyota which owns Daihatsu, Lexus and Subaru with 16.66%. Then we got Volkswagen, which owns Bugatti, Bentley, Audi, Lamborghini, also Porsche and um, Seat, Skoda and Ducati. Um, we got Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, <laughs> which is one entity which owns all those. Then there is GM from the US, which owns those car brands and um, FCA, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, they own Jeep, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat models and Maserati even, I didn't know that, okay. And those ones are also huge ones, Ford, Hyundai, Suzuki, Honda and PSA Group, ah, they own Peugeot, Citroën and Opel. Ah yeah, Opel is also a big one. And when we think about the airplane market, we can see the same exact approach with companies collaborating with each other to create tiny monsters, alliances, that are going to dominate that market. Here we have only three such alliances that are responsible for over 61% of all the worldwide air traffic. There is Sky Team, there is Star Alliance and there is One World. So you might think there are so many flight providers, um, but then you figure out there are basically three alliances which own 61% of all the worldwide um, air traffic. Trump Superhero explains 10 motor vehicles companies and 3 airplane companies own most of the transportation worldwide, land or air. Let's continue with healthcare. The Trump Superhero explains the top 10 pharmaceutical companies own 40% of the market. Enough said. These companies make the essentials of healthcare. They produce drugs, they develop treatments, vaccines, antibiotics, medical technology and so forth. He's also saying the same companies prescribe 43% of all drugs worldwide. And when it comes to vaccines, only four of them account for over 90% of the market share. Basically, the entire market of vaccines is owned by four companies. There you got it visually, four farts own 90% of the vaccines market. He is asking, could these companies engage in price fixing or think about merging together to become more powerful? Why not? It seems that that's the trend. And he is saying, there we have it my friends, Privatopus with its six tentacles spread around the world, controlling it, manipulating it, owning it. But then he is also saying, he can't just leave it like that. No, 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 no. In our world we have many domains like toy production, resource management, boats and books, porn and home appliances and so forth. In order to understand that monopolies can be found in pretty much any domain, he made a list of charts to showcase their value in their respective market. It is calculated in terms of assets. Assets are basically all that a company owns and is worth. The numbers represent the billions of dollars owned in assets. Observe a trend, how the first and the second place are dominating in almost all domains. That's what a monopoly looks like. Also, keep in mind that these are the top 5 companies in each domain. Imagine how much smaller other companies are compared to these ones, like say position 23 or 50 compared to position 1 or 2. They are minuscule. 
If there were no monopolies in our society, you would see a gradual difference between these companies and not what you will observe below. So let's take a look at those. It's, the first one is about software, so Microsoft and Oracle own that much and the other ones are here. In consumer electronics, Sony is the big one and in computer hardware, Apple is the big one. The Trump superhero is saying, if these were stairs, you would break three legs and two necks. And we can um, see and download all charts from here. This is basically the document that shows companies by total assets value to showcase how in pretty much any domain we can find monopolies. So in the domain of software and programming, Microsoft is the big one and then there's Oracle. In semiconductors, Samsung Electronics. Um, printing and publishing is dominated by Thomson Reuters. Iron and Steel is crazy dominated by Citic Pacific. In household and personal care, we learned that Procter and Gamble is a big player and also Unilever. And here we can also find L'Oreal, but it is owned by Nestle. So it's also crazy in heavy equipment. There's Caterpillar. Electrical equipment dominated by Schneider Electric and Mitsubishi Electric. Electronics is here, computer hardware dominated by Apple and so on and so on and so on. You can look it up in that document here. Everything is provided with a source. So yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> it's just insane and people like, I don't know if they are aware of it, but it's just ridiculous what is going on in this world today. It is an idiocracy, basically. But the Trump superhero also made a very cool tool to um, showcase this all a little bit better. So what he did was to create a mega search engine comprised of around 200 of the biggest companies out there to showcase their complete domination of our world. There are hundreds of thousands of items, if not millions, in the database so feel free to search any product you want movie artist company or brand see who owns them the engine is a work in progress and we may add more companies on the fly if we need it to cover even more ground so that's how the search engine looks like we can just um, type in tor for example to see what it will display to us and okay there we can see that the walt disney company um, owns basically Tor and owns the video game based on the Marvel comic. Another thing we can try is M and M, you know, M and M's. They are um, Swedes, so we can see here that they are owned by Mars. And let's try, what else did I want to try? Ah, <laughs> I wanted to try. <laughs> Uh, Nutella and of course we will figure out that it belongs or it owned it is owned by Ferrero or produced by Ferrero um, so yeah pretty cool um, you can check it out on trumpside.com slash tbf and if we scroll down we can see what those big farts the 175 companies own in the world um, it is presented in a visual way, which is super cool. So yeah, basically um, one single company out of them, the big farts, has a 28% market share of bio sales in the world and has around 500 bio brands in over 100 countries. Then they manufacture 70 to 80% of the most popular and best selling candy brands. Um, also meat production, fish production, but also in other domains like hardware. They are the largest producers of pretty much any kind of hardware. Networking equipment, monitors, Wi-Fi routers, projectors, motherboards, flash memory, graphic chips, computer processors, screens, robots, medical devices and equipment, gaming consoles, cameras, printers, hard drives, phones and computers batteries, construction equipment, telecommunication equipment, the internet of things hardware, 
appliances like refrigerators, washing machines, microwaves, AC units, kitchen electronics and so forth. It is a challenge to find any piece of hardware that is not made by the big farts through companies like those. And yeah, it is also about other domains, so you can just um, yeah, explore it by yourself. It is made very well and very in a nice way. Um, yeah, the operating systems they, the big farts produce are used by 100% of roughly 100% of smartphones, 99% of tablet computers and 96% of personal computers. In other words, pretty much 100% of the worldwide operating systems are owned by them uh, with email clients or search engines, of course. Google is the dominating uh, search engine, but we also learned that Baidu and what was the other one? Yandex from Russia is the big one. Um, so yeah, you can just explore it by yourself, um, transportation, different domains, clothes and furniture, healthcare and resources. So you can, oh, that's interesting because I yeah can showcase that you can even translate that. So I can show it to you. Basically, if I go now onto Deutsch, which is German, then the website opens in here. And now I'm just gonna copy um, that short code that you can see here. Copy and paste. And of course, I just wanna have it uh, one slash. Um, it now opens it and then it looks like this. So you can see here the green boxes. Those are the ones who are translated already. Um, yeah, I've done that already a while ago. So basically, we also need to change that design, um, but then you can just copy the text, translate it and um, type in here the translation you've done and you can um, like confirm the translation so you can translate that page also into your language, which is a cool thing. So it's uh, open for everyone to translate and so you can also contribute to that um, project or website. But let's go back to um, our book. A Trom superhero explains, so there they are, the two giant octopuses, Statopus and Privatopus. They own the world. These charlatans want to appear like what they are not, so they put on a tie, a jacket or some hat. But the abusers don't need any of that. They want to pretend that they represent the rest of the creatures and so they need no clothes to hide behind, they teach us. But the reality is that both of these monsters are nothing more than a bunch of mean gangsters. So the Trump superhero explains what's unique about octopuses is that they can change color and shape. One octopus can become identical to another. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate them. And that's what's happening with Statopus and Privatopus since they are many times the same creature. They look, smell and feel the same. Who tells the state abuser Statopus to spend money on a football stadium instead of a hospital? Hosting the Olympic Games versus restructuring the transportation system? Events over practicality? Well, the abuser is also a profiteer, a charlatan. They too want more for themselves and less for everybody else. Also, think about the private abuse. The charlatan. Banks are private, yet you cannot do without them. You can't pay for lots of your stuff if you don't have a bank account, so you are abused into making a deal with them to open a bank account. Then they will rape you too with rules that they change all the time and will force you to give them more and more money. Here are some examples. Therefore, the abuser is also a charlatan and the charlatan can become abusive. They work hand in hand most of the time. That is explained in detail here, so you can just read it. And here are some examples of how Statopus and Privatopus are working together. For example, here um, Siemens, a company from Germany, um, cooperated or worked together with the Statopus from China and then also the Statopus from Israel or the Iraq. 
um, Stadopus, the Nigeria um, Stadopus, in Venezuela and Argentina, and they just work together basically to, yeah, for Siemens to sell some stuff probably. Um, there are bribes and um, corruption. Another example is um, Alcatel Lucent, a company from France, which bribed officials with four million dollars to win telecommunications contracts in Costa Rica, Honduras, Taiwan, Malaysia and other countries. There is Snam Progetti from the Netherlands, which bribed the Nigerian officials to win construction contracts. And then there is the J GC Corporation from Japan, which bribed Nigerian officials to win construction contracts. And another one is Pan Alpina World Transport from Switzerland, which paid thousands of bribes totaling at least 27 million dollars to foreign officials in at least seven countries, including Angola, Azerbaijan, Brazil, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, Russia and Turkmenistan. So here you can see how the companies and states are working together for their own benefits and probably on the cost of the poor ones, of the general public. The last example is Daimler AG, <laughs> which actually comes not too far from where I grew up. And they made illegal payments to foreign officials worth 56 million dollars in at least 22 countries including China, Russia, Turkey, Hungary, Greece, Latvia, Serbia and Montenegro, Egypt and Nigeria among other places. So you think, wow, Germany, uh, I don't know, is so many engineers and they are made in Germany, quality, standard, but you know, they are just behind the scenes, there's a lot of shit going on. But of course we also have to always remember it's the game, our trade-based society, which pushes people to um, bribe others, to create problems and, and all of those. There's even another example, but I, I think I'm just gonna skip that now, because it's just too much. Like. But now we are also reaching the, the bottom line, um, the Trump superhero explains, these two big entities do not only own the entire game, but are interchangeable in their behavior, moving from abusers to charlatans, then thieves and the other way around. You trade with both the state and the private. One forces you, one deceives you, and many times over they do both. Both seek trades with you. The state wants to keep its position of the state and it forces you into trades that you can't really refuse and the private has to keep its profits raising or else it will cease to exist. So it will do anything it can do to engage you into trades and deceive you. They are the big players. If you look around the world, people are fighting over which one is better. The abuser or the charlatan, the left or the right. Some say we need more government control or else the private charlatans will only seek for profit and will ruin the world. Some say the abusive state is ruining things by being so nosy. Problem is, both are wrong because as you can see, the abuser and the charlatan are the same entity influenced by the trade world. And man, they are experienced thieves as well. Whatever these two, the state and the private do, is all trade-related poo. And they fart companies, businesses and profiteers, countries and politicians. Every human who is forced to or engages willingly in this game of trade is one of their farts in the end. Pun intended. Because everyone will become a gamer. Just like in the Monopoly board game where everyone acts according to the game. So never forget that this is not about these big players, this is about every player, at any level. If firefighters would make a profit out of putting out fires, they would start the fires themselves. And as a last um, fact, probably the most profound one about our society is a 2018 published report by Oxfam, which is a not-for-profit organization, which describes very well the state of our game. 
Big players get bigger and bigger and small players are getting fucked. There are currently over 2000 billionaires in US dollars. 82% of all global wealth in 2017 went to the 1% of the richest players, whilst the bottom 50% saw none of that. This increase of their wealth, not their huge amount of money, but only that increase in 2017 can eradicate poverty seven times over. Try to really understand this fact. 1% of humans on planet Earth of the players of the game of trade are richer than the remaining 99% of the humans the players combined. Two thirds of the wealth of billionaires is either inherited or created through monopolies. They came to the game and inherited their wealth or created monopolies and had zero competition. Like all the other examples the Trump superhero showed. What more can you say than that to prove that the game of trade is the most unjust game we humans will ever play? The Trump superhero says now, I hope you are now aware of who these players are and you won't look at your favorite teacher with the same eyes as you did before. Now you know him or them, the players, more intimately. You now know what hides behind the mask of companies, states, businesses and profiteers. Thinking back to the Monopoly board game, I think I've showcased to you that we are in fact playing it on a daily basis. And our own Monopoly game, the game of trade, is a billion times more unfair and creates a trillion more problems. The Trump superhero showed us the game of trade, he showed us the act, the abusers, charlatans and thieves, and he showed us the crap, common recurring amplifying problems. He is saying we can replace these players and the game will remain the same. That's the reality, my friends, supported by facts and examples. It is sad but important because it will allow us to find a solution for this. The first stage is understanding, then acceptance and now that we have gotten ready by knowing what players we will face, we are ready to fight. In the following parts we will focus on solutions. We will start the fight. So, that was it for this video, um, yeah, pretty amazing, pretty mind-blowing, I found personally. It is a book that provides so much information and I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, it is really important and relevant also. So yeah, let's see what the next video will be about, let's see how we can fight this mess in the end, this fuckery. I look forward to the next video, see you then and as always, take care and much love.